Good morning everyone, it's Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK and it's also Thyroid Awareness Week this week so I wanted to talk to you about um, how you actually know whether there's a problem with your thyroid. So um, thyroid disorders are actually a lot more common than we realise. It's estimated that around 1 in 8 to 1 in 10 women are likely to have some form of a thyroid disorder in their lifetime so that's a pretty high statistic. We also know that it's 10 times more common in women than in men. Um, yep, just another thing for us women to deal with. And I think it's because that's that very close uh, interrelationship with our hormones that we see this um, increased prevalence. So the problem with having um, issues with our thyroid is that it's so often misdiagnosed. And I was definitely one of these people. So I walked around feeling really, really ill. I didn't walk around because I was um, housebound for a long period of time. But I actually had no idea that it was, it was my thyroid that was causing the problems. Um, despite regular trips to my doctor's office, um, various blood tests, my thyroid results always came back as normal. And now 10 years down the line, my thyroid results are still normal within the parameters that we, you know, within the reference ranges set within conventional, um, within the conventional medical model. So... I wanted to talk to you about it today because I think there are a lot of women that are completely unaware that they might have an underactive thyroid. And this can actually be, um, I think, you know, it can be massively debilitating for some women. You know, they might actually find that their quality of life significantly impacted, their moods impacted, um, you know, just their ability to be, to show up in life, whether that's to be a woman, whether that's to be a wife or a partner, whether that's to be a mother, you know, all of those things get diminished when our thyroid doesn't work well. So how would you know if you had an underactive thyroid? So typical symptoms of an underactive thyroid is things like um, extreme fatigue. You know, one of the biggest things we see is, is people feeling really tired. So it's that feeling of really getting out, in the out of bed in the morning and thinking, God, I don't even feel like I've slept. Um, and then as the day or, you know, maybe you're okay in the morning, but as the day progresses, you know, around two, three o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock, five o'clock, you're dead and you're feeling exhausted or you fall asleep in front of the telly at night because you're just so fatigued and you just feel like you're really weary and your bones are actually tired. Um, and then also you've got things going on like you noticing that you're seeing changes and fluctuation in your weight. So if you've got an underactive thyroid, you're more likely to see... Um, you know, difficulty in, in losing weight, where with an overactive thyroid, it goes the other way because your thyroid's working quicker, so your metabolism will be speeding up. But with an underactive thyroid, you've got that really sluggish sort of um, metabolism that's going to mean that weight loss is not something that you find easy, or you might just be gaining weight for no reason. I think a lot of women with ongoing thyroid issues, you know, will be very happy to report that actually they're, they're gaining weight and they don't change their diet, they're exercising, they're going to the gym, they're eating the right food, and yet they're just not losing weight um, and they, they just don't know how to do it. So that's something we see with the thyroid as well. So that's a good sign that your thyroid might not be working. Other things are things like cognition. So we do see people's inability to kind of process words and I can definitely vouch for that. And, you know, I might do some videos or lives or interact with even my clients and sometimes my brain does just not process things in the right way. Um, but we kind of see that delay in processing information sometimes, not getting the right words, um, not even knowing which words to choose, um, and also just having that heavy brain fog. Um, so that's another symptom. And then you've got things like brittle nails, your hair's thinning, you might be losing hair, you might notice your skin's really dry. Um, and then you might actually notice that your mood's impacted so that you're not feeling as bright or as cheerful and that you're just feeling a bit down in the dumps and you don't really know what's causing that because nothing's changed really other than you're feeling tired and that can get your mood down on its own really i think if we don't have energy and we feel ill i think anyone who's been ill will know how great it feels to feel better um so when we're not feeling great we generally our mood is impacted but it's a little bit more than that so we kind of feel that we're you know that, that, that we're feeling slightly depressed at times and um a little bit anxious maybe and that you have increased anxiety about things that maybe before you weren't feeling anxious about. Um, other things can include that you might notice that you'll start seeing kind of thinning of the your eyebrow brow on the sort of third part of the eyebrow so that's a naturopathic 
sign that we look at to see if someone's thyroid might not be working very well. And um, other things that we might see is digestive issues, you know, because your metabolism isn't working in the way that it should be working. So we might see things like acid reflux or we might see things like indigestion um, because it's going to be impacting bile secretion. It's going to be impacting hydrochloric acid in the gut. And also we might start to notice things like constipation because that metabolic patterns is slowed down significantly. Um, and again, if you're hyper, you'll see the opposite. So you might see some you know, looser bowel movements, more frequent bowel movements. Um, you might also notice that you've got changes in your menstrual cycle. Um, and so again, with hyperthyroidism, you know, you, you're likely to see changes in your flow or maybe just not regular periods. So that might be that you're seeing in, you know, irregular periods as well. Um, other things that we can think of is things like muscle pain and aches. So this is a really common symptom that we see in people with thyroid um, conditions. Um, and this is that inflammation in the body that's kind of signaling the muscle pain as well. We've got things like um, hair loss, which I've mentioned. Oh, and then the libido. So girls, if your libido isn't great, then it could well be to do with your thyroid. So our sex drive is massively influenced by our thyroid. And um, I know we're always kind of, you know, some of us are always looking for an excuse, but you might genuinely have a reason as to why you're not that keen. And then a common symptom um, that I see in clinic and also I experienced myself is actually a sore throat and some you know, sensation around the thyroid gland. So we might find that people have hoarseness or a sore throat or tenderness around the thyroid gland. So your thyroid is basically this little butterfly gland that sits around the trachea. And um, its main function is to regulate metabolism. But if you think about the thyroid, it is kind of impacting every single, single cell in the body. So most of the cells in the body have receptors for thyroid cells. And so when it's when we're talking about the thyroid, we're not just talking about things that's going on here. And this is where when we're looking at testing to try and understand what's actually going on with the person's health and why they might be presenting with symptoms that they're, they're slipping through the net. Because when you go to your GP and you're talking about feeling tired, that your mood's impacted, that your hormones are irregular, that you have di you know digestive issues, that you have got muscle pain and aches. I mean, the problem with those symptoms is they can really go into so many categories. So when you do a standard you know, fasting blood glucose test or a fasting blood test and your thyroid um, markers come back as normal. Um, and that's something that I will discuss with you tomorrow. I'm going to go through a thyroid panel and explain exactly what are the key markers we should be looking for when we're testing your thyroid. But, you know, when that comes back normal, you're basically going to be categorized as either having some kind of chronic fatigue or maybe, um, a mystery illness like chronic fatigue or ME, or you might be categorized as having some depression and be, be you know, be offered a antidepressant. So a lot of people are slipping through this net because of the way we currently test for thyroid disease or, you know, five thyroid function. Um, and then there's the other side of this as well. You know, maybe you've already been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, but actually you're still not feeling better. And I'm going to be delving into some of that all throughout this week because it's thyroid awareness week and I think it's really important this is one of the biggest disorders for women and we're really missing it we're missing all aspects of it and I think it's really important as a functional medicine practitioner and as a naturopathic nutritional therapist nutritionist that I want to get women to feel empowered to understand their own health and to take action so they can feel better you don't have to feel tired all the time you don't have to feel below par and there is generally a reason that you're feeling like this so don't ignore it or just think it's in your head or just accept what your doctor's telling you because there is a reason your body's communicating to you anyway time for some time to go and enjoy some sun I've got some work to do but it's been really lovely talking to you today have a lovely Monday and I'll see you all again back tomorrow to talk about all things thyroid testing bye for now okay